Welcome everyone, this is Zonta with Repo Products. Today's video is a request by a user on how to create a custom line type in Revit. Um, not specifically per se the native method of creating line types in Revit. So let me go ahead and explain further. Um, I'm in Revit 2018 because I wanted to create it in this version so it can be upgraded to other higher versions for those that need it down the road. Um, if I created it in Revit 2022, latest version, all the other uh, end users that may need this line type would not be able to use it since they may not have Revit 2022. Also, if you head over to the Manage tab of the ribbon and go to Additional Settings and head over to Line Styles, you can see in here that there are a lot of different line styles and line patterns that are being used. If you head over to additional settings and go to line patterns, when we take a look at these specific ones that are with, come natively with Revit, and we drill into any one of them and look at them via the edit button, this method only allows you to use dashes, spaces, okay, and dots. So it's a little restricting to make something that says, say for example, water line or gas line or an X to do like a fence. So this particular video is meant for you to try to create this type of line type. So how do we do this? Um, if we take a look at this particular item, this is a uh, detail line item, line based detail line item. And if we select it and we go to its type properties, you'll see that there is a parameter in here called text and I can change it to whatever I want. In this case, it's called water. If I want to, I can click duplicate and we'll make another one. Let's make it, uh, I don't know, uh, propane. And then in here we call this propane. And when we change this information, that line should show up and it says propane. Okay? Uh, we still have the the water one, I just need to select it and switch it to the one that says water. Okay, so also when you go to create this object, as you're drawing it, it creates the and creates the spacing. It, how does the spacing function work? If we select it, we can see we have dimensions that say offset and spacing, we can change these values and it will affect the uh, positioning and the amount of space between the words, okay? And this is something you're going to have to play with from a value standpoint because of your scale. So this is a repeating detail line item. So it is dependent upon the view that you work in. So if I were to change this scale to say three quarter inch, things get adjusted slightly. You see that? If I go to something much larger, say three inches equal to a foot, now you can see it's much smaller and there's a lot more spacing. So you'll have to fix and adjust these values here to make sure it's legible for you for the particular view and the particular scale that you're working with. So how do we make something like this? I'm going to go ahead and close this file. Actually, let me save this just so that I can send it to whomever I want to send it to. Uh, Revit line type custom sample and then we'll close the file. All right, now this is the actual Revit family that we created and that we're using in a project. How does this come about? Um, the way this comes about is that we create a custom family that we nest into this family. We align and lock and associate them to specific parameters and we set up all the formulas, okay? So let's go through this process. Um, first thing I'm going to do is close this file. And we're going to start from scratch. So I want to start a new family, annotation-based. And we're going to call it generic annotate. Start with generic annotation. We'll delete this little piece of text that we don't need. The insertion point is here. So we are going to go through the process of creating a new uh, parameter, family parameter. So clicking up here under family types, start a new one, and then here we can call it whatever we want. We're going to call it symbol. And it's going to be text-based. So you can type whatever piece of text you want in there. 
<clears throat> um, it's instance based as well. Uh, I'm sorry, type based as well. We'll click OK, and now we have that parameter. I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to create a new label and place the label dead center or as close as possible, and then use that symbol family parameter and put it in its place. So here, for example, say gas. All right, now that this family is created, this is the family that is going to be nested inside the line-based family. So I'm going to save this file as a family. And here, we already created one called symbol family. So I'm going to call it uh, symbol family two, just so we don't get confused. And then we're going to create a brand new family again, new family, and this time we're going to create a detail item line based family. Clicking open, we have our information here. We can swap back using control tab and we can load into the project. Okay. We can load into the project and just place an instance of it. Now that we've placed an instance of it, uh, if you select it and go to its type properties, you can see it has the symbol command here, and we have to associate it to a parameter to work with in this host family. Okay, So before we do that, with this particular family, we're going to go ahead and save this family for now. And we're going to call it detail text 2, since I already did it earlier. And now that that's done, we can create some parameters that we need to work with. So we'll head back into the Family Types parameter window, and we're going to start adding some parameters that we need. And so what we need is a family parameter. First one we need is offset. And um, these are going to be um, common, length, instance-based. Okay, and then we're going to do another one. We're going to call it spacing. It also is instance-based and length-based as well. And we're going to create a third one called text. And it is going to be instance-based as well. I'm sorry, let's do common text-based, and we'll leave it type for now. And then we're also going to click OK to finish. We'll select our nested family. We'll go back to the type properties window and here under symbol, we can click this item here, this icon, to associate this symbols family parameter that's in the nested family to the text parameter of the host family we just created. Doing this will allow us to go here under text and change it to whatever we want. For this case, we'll just say gas and we'll set uh, some values like this for offset and spacing. Okay, so now that that's finished, we can take this um, nested family and we can array it. And I'll just array it like this. Now that it's arrayed, I can go ahead and create dimensions for placement. And then these dimensions can be parameterized with the offset. Once that's finished, we can select the array, select the actual integer. Uh, oh, my, my apologies. I haven't done that one last step for the array yet. Um, so now we need to create another family parameter to be able to control the integer value of the array. Okay, so I'm going to click this button here to start a new parameter. And this is going to be called um, array items. And it's going to be common. And it's going to be integer based. And in this case, I'm going to make it instance based and hit OK. Okay, and then we'll put in a value 2 to match the initial array. But it's actually going to be a formula because we have to control the amount of spacing between one end and the other end of the detail line item and the spacing between the text. So here it's going to be a formula. It's going to be length minus 2 times the offset divided by the spacing plus one. So now that that's finished, we can go back into the array, select it, select the actual integer array number, 
um, don't append it to the end because you'll have some weird anomalies and we'll associate the array like that. So now that that's finished, we're going to hit save. We will start a new project based upon, say, the architectural template file. We'll use control tab to jump back to the uh, family we just created. And then we are going to load it into the project two. Okay, now that it's loaded in, it's assuming that we're trying to create a detail item. So I'm just going to click and drag and click. And then hit modify to finish. I'll zoom in and you can see how the spacing is pretty tight. And this is set to eighth inch. So if I were to switch to say half inch, because a lot of details are done at half inch, this is what you get. Now, the line part of it that goes in between is something we missed. So we can go ahead and, and control tab to get back here. And then we'll go ahead and create a line that goes from this end to this end. And then we will um, use the align command and align, oops, my apologies, align the vertical reference plane to the end of that detail line and same thing on this end. So that way those ends stay locked. Now that that's finished, we can save the file, load it back into the project and overwrite the one that we have. See? And then, obviously, we, once we have it selected, uh, we can go into the parameters. We can, we can rename this one. We can call it gas line. And then, it, obviously, it says gas, so that's OK. The spacing itself can be adjusted. So if I say 2 and 2, then it looks a little bit more uh, even spaced. And then I can actually you know, um, pull this down, grab it, and I can duplicate it and call it, I don't know, fence line. And in this case, we'll just use a big capital X. See? And then if I hold control and drag, then I can actually make another one. And I'll duplicate it and we'll call this uh, water line. And then change this to water. So you can make it fairly easily this way to control uh, Revit line types. It's not in essence, a Revit line type uh, per se under manage, under additional settings, under line patterns. It's, re it's really a repeating 2D detail line item component that can be used uh, on the project and on a per view basis. Okay, uh, If you need the family or any of the files I just created, just let me know. Shoot me a, a put it in the comments. Uh, make sure you include your email address and then I can just email it to you. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, just uh, feel free to reach out.